Hey class, welcome back to science and welcome back to our energy transfer and transformation book. We are getting into our last lesson and last chapter for this book and for science for this quarter. So I just want to thank you for joining me and being a part of this quarter, for working hard, for asking questions, for completing your assignments. Some of you guys have been on top and on track. Some of you guys are getting caught up from this chapter and from previous chapters. Wherever you are, you being here and working is great and getting caught up and staying caught up is awesome. So I just want to applaud you. I'm so proud of you. I'm glad to be your teacher. Just keep it up. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. We can have a great rest of the quarter, a great rest of the year, whether you started off well or not. As long as we keep working and getting things done and, and uh, working hard and um, yeah, doing those things that we need to do, we can have and finish this year strong. So you guys are awesome. We are getting into, like I said, chapter seven, which is solving problems and designing solutions with Thomas A. Edison. Chapter six, if you haven't done that, remember if you haven't done the previous chapters, go back and watch those. Chapter six, we talked about how energy transfer and transformation can solve problems, just like a toaster uh, transferring electricity and that heat to toast some bread can solve a problem of us having a good piece of bread for breakfast or for a snack. How um, you know solar energy can be transferred to give a home or a business or a community electricity. We talked about how a clock transfers energy to tell us what time it is. How a phone with its rechargeable battery can be recharged and stored to be able to give it off energy to light the phone, to give it sound or motion for vibrating to help us stay connected with people. So those are a few examples that we talked about. And so we're gonna dive a little bit, bit, a little bit more into solving problems and design, designing solutions. So let's call attention to the big question. How did Thomas Edison use his knowledge of energy transfer and transformation to solve problems? So as we read, let's look for answers of how Thomas Edison took um, than his knowledge to solve problems using energy transfer and transformation. So Thomas Alva Edison changed the world. In his lifetime, he designed over 1,000 inventions. Edison applied his knowledge of energy transfer and transformation to make an astounding number of useful devices. And I just wanna pause really quick. We, as we learn about Thomas Edison, and maybe some of you already know, about what he's done and what he's solved and how, like I just said right here, he changed the world. I just wanted to point out that he didn't do this overnight and it took him a long time to create these thousand inventions. He made a lot of mistakes, but he learned a lot from those mistakes and those were you know, lessons that he learned. They're not, they're not just mistakes, but they're lessons that he learned to be able to solve these things. And so as you go through school, as you go through life, you're gonna make you know, mistakes, you're gonna do things wrong, but if you have the right attitude, you can turn those mistakes into lessons to propel you to change your life, change those around you, and maybe some of you guys will um, become, you know, renowned, like known, like Thomas Edison, and you know, you could change the world, you could change a community. So I just wanted to point that out. I think it's really cool that what he did, but I just also wanted to point out that it took him time and he made mistakes and we, we all do that. But if we have the right attitude of learning and growing, like we're teaching here at Hojo, that you can accomplish great things, okay? So Edison knew a lot about energy transfer of one form of energy to another. He used this expertise to develop an electric, electric light bulb his bulb, the carbon filament light bulb, forever changed the way people live. Edison designed and tested ways to use energy to solve problems. He knew that electrical energy would be transferred through wires. He also knew that in wires made, sorry, he also knew that in wires made of some materials, electrical energy would be transformed to light and heat, making the wires grow brightly. Edison wanted to make a light source that would stay lit for a useful amount of time. Edison also wanted his light source to be safe and practical for people to use at home. And let's pause really quick. So born in Ohio in 1847, so um, about a hundred and, uh, let's see, like 70, 
six years ago, is that right? Almost 200 years ago, Thomas Alva Edison was a busy, curious boy. When he was seven, he left school and was homeschooled by his mother. So whether you're in school or at home, you can learn and be curious and be inventive and um, be able to do great things. So Edison was a problem solver. Think about a time before light bulbs. People had to rely on fire to light their way in the dark. Open flames such as torches, candles, and oil lanterns provided the light that people used for activity after sunset. Edison worked to design a device that could use electricity to be a new kind of source. And remember, he wanted it to be safe and he wanted it to last a while. Um, a candle or an oil, will, it will run out of its oil source or run out of its candle wick. And he wanted something that would last a while and be safe. Many people didn't want to rely on an open flame that was potentially unsafe in a home, right? Could burn things, burn house down. Eventually, after many tests, Edison found a solution. I think it was around like a thousand different variations it took him to find the solution to a light bulb, so a, a lot, almost a ton, half a ton, right? A ton is 2,000. took him, I think, almost a thousand variations to find a light bulb. Thomas Edison did not invent the first light bulb. Other scientists and engineers had designed and tested bulbs before Edison. The earliest desvi devi sorry, designs of light bulbs could only provide light for a short amount of time, and the materials were expensive. Edison saw an opportunity, he saw a problem, he saw, and he was trying to find a solution. He found this opportunity to make the early bulbs better and more affordable for homes and businesses. Here was a great need. Thomas Edison improved the designs of others to make his famous bulb. Let's pause and look at this. This is one of Edison's first bulbs. Edison's carbon filament light bulb. The filament in the wire is the wire in a bulb that glows with light when electricity moves through it. The glass protects the filament. Edison and his team tested more than 6,000 materials to find the right material for light bulb filaments. So I was, I was way off. I thought it was 1,000 variations, but he tried 6,000 materials to find the right material. They wanted to find an inexpensive material that would glow for a long time without burning up. In 1879, he found, finally found a practical solution, a filament of bamboo with a coating of carbon that transformed electrical energy to light energy. So 1879. How old was he? He was 32 years old. All right. So let's read this quote by him. When you have exhausted all the possibilities, remember this, you haven't. When you think you've tried everything, you probably haven't. So Edison thought of engineering designs and then built, tested, and proved what he designed. He often had to conduct many tests before he found a solution that met his goal. Electrical en energy where you need it. Edison's use of energy transfer and transformation extended beyond light bulbs. In 1901, he presented the first alkaline battery. Car batteries at the time used lead chemicals to store energy. Edison wanted to make batteries that would be lighter and more powerful than those heavy lead batteries. He wanted to make electric cars that would be more efficient and reliable. After many experiences, Experiments and fail failures, he found a combination of chemicals that worked best. Unfortunately, Edison's idea for electric cars didn't work out at the time. Automobiles designed to burn fossil fuels became more popular, but Edison's work with batteries often still affects our lives today. Edison's alkaline battery design was used to develop the batteries you use in flashlights and remote controls. So materials inside a battery react and transform stored energy to electrical energy. Don't break open a battery, right? So don't try to break open a battery. The chemicals are toxic. So these batteries use a reaction between two chemicals to convert stored chemical energy to electrical electricity needed in many devices. Alkaline batteries have long lasting energy, which makes them dependable. Many modern batteries are the direct descendants of Edison's invention. All right, so improving designs never ends. So Edison famously said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Good inventors, including Thomas Edison,
practice persistence. To persist means to keep trying to solve a problem, even when you find ways that won't work. Just as Thomas Edison improved the inventions of others, other inventors built upon his work. The earliest light bulbs designed by Edison were fragile. Sometimes wires would break often from, off from the filament. Many times the filament would not last long because of the heat. Lewis Howard Latimer lived in the same time period as Edison and even worked for Edison at a point, at one point. Among Latimer's seven patents are two that improve on the original light bulb design. One of his patents was a design to improve on the way the wire in the bulb was secure, secured to the filament. Another of his patents improved the strength and durability of the filament. This meant the bulb could last longer before the filament broke from the heat. So Lewis Howard Latimer was born in 1848, so a year after Thomas Edison in Chelsea, Massachusetts. His, he, he first worked for Edison, Edison's competitors and later for Edison's own company. Okay, so design solutions over time. Many kinds of light bulbs waste a lot of the electrical energy that transfers through their filaments. This is because much of their energy changes to heat instead of just light. This is another design problem for en engineers to solve. The heat weakens the bulb filament, shortening the time it lasts. The heat also warms the room in which people use the bulbs, which isn't welcome in spaces that people try to keep cool. There are many types of light bulbs today that transform energy a, a little differently from the way Edison light bulbs work. Fluorescent and LED light sources uses le less electricity produce less heat and last longer than others. So this is traditional bulbs use electrical en energy through a filament to produce light. And now we have these compact fluorescent light bulbs, CFL bulbs use the same technology as neon lights. They give off a glow and little heat. And then we have tiny LED or light emitting diodes. Bulbs are combined into bigger devices. They give off a lot of light and very little heat using little energy. So each new design improves an earlier version of the solution, providing light in a better way. In the same way, each version of the battery improves on earlier ways to provide electrical energy. As long as there are problems, people will continue to design solutions. And that is it, everybody. Thanks for joining me with chapter seven, our last chapter. Hope you enjoyed this book. I sure have. So before we end, let's read the big question. So how did Thomas Edison use his knowledge of energy transfer and transformation to solve problems? So some points or hints. The problem was back in the day, there were the oil lamps that people used to light their way, light their, way, light their homes at night. But that could be unsafe, right? Because of heat, the fire could burn. And then there was also people that were already developing light bulbs, but they weren't as efficient. They wouldn't last as long. So those were the problems. How did Thomas Edison use his knowledge to solve those problems? And that is it. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And I will see you guys probably in another lesson, whether history or literature. And I will see you there.